Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Webinar Express, Marketing with Purpose, Building Trusted Brand Experiences, with our guest speaker, Ben Irons from Microsoft, which has been organized by CIM Wales. If you are a university student attending today's webinar, you may want to sign up to the CIM Marketing Club. All you'll need to do is hover your mobile phone camera over the QR code you can see on screen, and that will take you through to the Marketing Club sign up page. So I'd now like to hand you over to Ben Irons, Commercial Director, Microsoft Advertising, who is our guest speaker today. Over to you, Ben. Thank you, Phil. And just yeah, echoing Phil's point, just good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for thanks for taking the, the time to join in. Um, I suppose, first of all, I just want to say thanks very much to the Charter Institute Marketing for the opportunity to share, just be part of the conversation. I'm really glad to be here, you know, really glad to share my insight and our insight from Microsoft that just helps inform marketers to get even better um, at marketing and, and building those trusted experiences. Quick thank you and shout out to, to Gareth Morgan and the Charter Institute Marketing of Wales Board for, for hosting us, as Phil mentioned, um, and thank you to all for attending and, and watching this session. I hope you find it valuable, informative, uh, and maybe adds a little bit extra to your sort of playbook, I suppose, if you like, from a, a marketing point of view. So thank you very much. I suppose just shifting on then a little bit about a little bit about me and a little bit of an introduction. Um, I work at Microsoft. I've been here for three years now, as Phil mentioned, on the um, in the commercial director role. But a big part of my role is really around people management. Yes, I work with a lot of brands and specifically in the travel industry on their marketing strategies. But a big part of my role is is as a people manager and, and driving inclusive culture, which is a big internal point we have at Microsoft. And that's really helping shape me and my journey in thinking about inclusive marketing, thinking about diversity and thinking about how we um, build trusted experiences um, with brands and working with advertisers to, to do that. I have worked, at, I've been very privileged actually, we worked at some fantastic businesses across the digital marketing industry over the years, and that has led me to, to be able to work with some brilliant brands. And I've actually been a digital marketing director for Not the High Street and you know, tried to impart my knowledge and wisdom and strategy into some of our marketing strategies. And, and it's not easy. And I think my journey is really on the development path in that sense. I am on my own journey as a, as a marketing professional as a people manager and as a people person, obviously as an employee as well, as well. And I'm learning about purpose and learning obviously all the time about inclusivity. And that's really what today is about. Um, you know, Microsoft ourselves, you know, we're obviously on a journey of, of learning and evolving. You know, we don't always get it right. And um, we're continually striving to learn and improve. And obviously we're helping educate others um, and informing them on their own journey in, in search for building more connections with, with consumers and driving more inclusive cultures as well. I also wanted to share a little bit about me as well. Like, who am I? Um, you know, I'm sat behind the screen here, which in normal times might be in a, in a room, but it isn't the case at the moment. Um, hopefully we'll get back there soon. But just to humanize me a little bit more, I'm white, I'm British. I'm actually born in Swansea in Wales. Um, I'm married. I have a young family with two little boys, one of them who's three, the other one who's fairly fresh. He's just four months old. Um, I'm a fluent Welsh speaker. and I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of my Welsh heritage as well. Uh, and when I think about values, which we're going to talk a lot through this presentation on or this, this talk around values, they really have shifted over the past couple of years to family. And that's really led me to be thinking more about my personal purpose, which has also really shifted toward family as well. And this is really important because purpose, you know, it's a big thing as a headline, but it really does deserve the space and respect, you know, we're going to give it and think about it. From a personal point of view, you know, I'm always thinking about, you know, purpose and, and how that, you know, sometimes shifts and change depending on sort of circumstances. And as I mentioned, family has really become a, a key driver for me now in thinking about my purpose. But I'm always learning as well. It's funny if I was actually just even out on a run this morning and I was listening to an audio book that, that I have on the go at the minute that was validating some of my thoughts around purpose, which is, you know, our purpose is... It's constant. You know, it's not just a goal that you set. It really is the reason. It's kind of your north star. It's the the thing that everything is driving towards, and it's informing the decisions we make. You know, it's all, all of the decisions we make are linked back to that purpose. And in the best examples, it, it brings it all back into one one place as well. And I think again, from a personal context and thinking about my journey as a as a manager as well, you know, I'm a white British male. I'm really trying to to become a better ally for all of the employees that I work with, all the friends, family, people I engage with. 
and around my purpose that has a big connection and it's something that I'm working towards thinking about you know how do I become a better ally how can I understand people more or better and be a better ally to people in my in my role in my personal capacity and professional capacity as well and I think if we think conceptually about purpose you know it gets us into uncomfortable positions at some times I think as brands and as marketers you know we really have to spend time thinking about what is our purpose what is us you know put ourselves in those uncomfortable positions embrace it and really think about how you know we can drive better results from our marketing better connections with our customers all linked back to to our purpose from a marketing context what i wanted to focus on today really is thinking about and talking about the the opportunities brands have to put their customers front and center you know purpose driven products purpose driven services uh, and brand experiences as i mentioned before purpose becomes that front and center that real north star if you like and today really is about provoking questions you know thinking as you're watching this or listening to this you know what's your company's purpose you know, does it align with what people care about is it reflected in everything you do in your employee relations internally in the culture that you build within your businesses and to the products you build, how do they, and also oh, to the products you build, and how do they demonstrate, or how do you demonstrate that also in your marketing as well? You know, what I'm going to do today is share a framework that we've built around the insight that we've gathered, and then use today then. There is no magic formula. It's an idea of how do we share some of the learnings that we have? How might that help give structure or inform to enable you to take action or learn from uh, and act off the back of it? there is help out there you know there's always help out there to try and improve there are some resources available um, and that leads me to giving you some good news up front actually in a, in a presentation in a webinar um, we actually have two uh, resources available they're incredibly useful and really practical especially the the first part which is the, the marketing with purpose playbook it really explores brand, brand values investigates inclusive marketing activation strategies things around keyword selection, use of language, imagery, it's from very handy checklists for accessible site design and research. Uh, and it's a great sort of reference point and go-to place. And these resources are available. We'll make sure they are available um, for everybody to, to download and have a little look through. And um, we spent time building them, but they really have been great resources in, in being able to reference how you can improve, make some small, small changes, maybe challenging your thinking. And the second resource is a research study we conducted um, around the psychology behind inclusivity. Um, it's a fascinating output. Um, I'll be referencing some of the output from this study as we go through today as well. There is a full version available. It was done in 2020. Um, it was focused around Gen Z, and I'll, I'll touch on that in the presentation as to as to why. But the influence they have and the um, influence they have around buying, but also around values, is really important. It's conducted around three phases, looking at the uh, meaning of inclusion and actually breaking inclusive marketing down again and exploring that concept around exclusion as well. Thinking about the subconscious responses to advertising. So we're looking at implicit association tests, looking at a range of ads that we showed people that drove a reaction, drove a, an, an engagement and actually showed what that, um, what that actually looks like and how it can be used to better marketing. Then finally, establishing the purchase intent of inclusive ads. And this is really important, I suppose, for all of us in the marketing capacity is we want engagement. We want it to drive action, drive value for our business. And that's something that came out of it as well. So I'm going to be referencing some of the output from this, but not all of it. It's pretty extensive. But again, it will be available to, um, to use as well um, for everybody to reference and have a little look more of the stats that come through that. So let me bring it back then to, to thinking about yeah, what is marketing with purpose? And if you think about it, trust really is at the heart and centre of everything, really, when it comes to, to thinking about marketing with purpose. You know, trust really does drive business value. Trust really does drive loyalty. It really does drive love and affinity for a brand. And that can really have a, an accelerator or multiplier effect, really, on the value it can drive for your business. But it's not easy to, to build trust. So how do you build trust? So we're going to look at breaking things down into, into three areas and try and help create a bit of a structure and take a closer look at each of them responsibility so if you're thinking about it from a brand's perspective how do you act the values what do you stand for as a as a brand what do you stand for in what you're doing and inclusion a huge part you know how are you actively involving everybody how are you making it authentic how are you making those genuine connections with with individuals as well now then let's look at the first core building block 
to trust, which is responsibility. Responsible means being transparent in everything you do. It's quite fragile, I suppose, if you think about it, it's quite a fragile exchange around transparency and trust, and it can be easily broken. It takes a while to gain up, but it can be easily broken by, by negativity, by actions that, that aren't trustworthy. So it's really important, I think, for brands to be responsible and be transparent in everything they do. People want equitable experiences, not just compliance. You know, built or designed with everybody in mind, whether it's a product or a service, not just built for one group in mind and others added on. So for example, if you're focusing on accessibility, it's imperative because it opens up opportunities. Bring those equitable experiences to all customers, not just to certain groups. Let's dip in a little bit, actually, um, to the Edelman Trust Barometer from 2020. Ethics are three times more important to trusting a company than competence. That's a really powerful stat when, when you think about it. You know, It's not just about what you offer. It's actually all about what you stand for more than what you offer. And we say here, trust is not given or is not a given. It really is earned. And I think stats like this really do you know, showcase the the mindset of, of individuals, the mindset of customers really does favour around that trust uh, and trust and ethics part as well. Let's look a little bit further and let's look a bit deeper. Only a third of advertisers think that taking a social or political stand strengthens their relationship with customers. Yet, 80% of people believe brands should play a role in solving societal problems. So that's a really interesting I suppose paradox coming up and there's a slight danger of a disconnect here potentially you know customers think that brands should take a stand and brands should engage but brands are a bit nervous maybe about this and actually a bit nervous about taking a stand and the reality of what we're seeing coming out of that is that playing it safe potentially is riskier than taking a stand yet taking a stand is probably what holds a lot of brands back and that's really important and it's also not easy as well you know, putting yourselves out there as a brand to take a stand for a social issue or a societal issue is not easy, but it could have a very, very positive impact. And we see that come through as well. 85% of customers say that they'll only consider a brand if they trust the brand. You know, trust is essential to driving business results. It's essential to beginning a relationship with any customers. Of course, it is worth remembering there are varying degrees of trust. You know, people still do business with companies they may not necessarily trust 100%. People will make that trade off. I think we understand that for sure. The world isn't perfect in that regard. But perhaps once they're given an alternative and given an alternative to a brand they trust, they will move and they will, will take that action. And as I said before, I think we all understand that trust is not given. It really is earned by action. I suppose in a marketing context, one way of looking at this, of course, is around um, privacy and data, you know, how we use customer data, the value exchange we provide, transparency that's there as well. That's not a new concept for marketing, but it's also you know, still front and centre that's really, really important. Now, the second core building block to trust is values. You know, values really do drive value, which is something that comes out in the, in the resources that we have. And as a brand, you know, shift your focus to consider what people actually value. You know, I mentioned at the start about energy and my values around family. That'll be similar with other customers as well. And have a really you know, clear focus on, on what it is that people actually value. You can create more personal connections by investing in truly understanding people's values. You know, go deep into diversity and be really open to uncovering new insights and finding new audiences that you may not have considered before. That can drive even more value to a business, even broader, you know, bringing in broader um, customers and bringing in a broader sort of range of opportunity as well. Now, I mentioned around um, Gen Z. It formed a big part of the, the study that we did for a particular reason. They have a big amount of influence at the moment, you know, a lot of it in terms of the wallet and how much they actually spend. And they have serious sway with their parents as well. You know, I think we saw that 93 percent of parents take advice from this generation. And this is a big signal. You know, they're giving us a very big, clear signal about their consumer mindset. They, they value values and they engage with brands and connect with brands that um, showcase that value clearly to them as well. And centred in values is this concept around shared meaning, shared meaning between a person and a brand, a trusting relationship that leads to loyalty longer term. And I think as, as brands, that's something I think everybody's looking for is how do we maintain and retain customers long term? 
and the value that they will drive over that period of time. So I suppose first make sure your brand is really clear in terms of its values. You know, what is your mission on the planet? What is your benevolent brand attribute? Consider your sustainable business practices, accessible business practices. To uncover people's values, go deep in diversity. I think really explore, think about really exploring the many layers and dimensions of what make us diverse. I think something we found a lot in, in our sort of research and conversations is diversity, as we know, really goes beyond what you can see from an appearance point of view. It goes beyond gender or just race. Do you know what customers actually believe in? Are you considering people with disabilities? Do you know your customers' cultural influences like language, education, location, nationality? And then finally, how do they engage with people or spend their free time? What is their communication style? All these kind of go into making this concept or creating this concept around shared meaning and driving that deeper connection with, um, with potential current or new customers as well. And there are some really clear commerce signals in here as well. In the study, we found that groups of individuals stopped purchasing from brands because it did not represent their values. Yeah, this is actual behavior. This is what they actually did, not what they said they would do but the action that they actually took and stopped purchasing. So we see this really come through in not just conceptually that we share values or we have a shared connection or we don't have a shared connection, that then leads to actually people not purchasing from, from a particular brand. And that's really important. And I suppose it'd be wrong of me just to, to sit up here and talk and say, you know, what or oh, not talk about what Microsoft are doing in this space as well. You know, nobody exempt from this and let's look at ourselves. I think go back a few years when Satya Nadella became the CEO of Microsoft in 2014, he really reset our mission very on in his role. And our mission became, you know, empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. You know, to truly become a people-centric brand, it begins with culture. You know, our mission, I suppose, really ignited our cultural transformation and really delivered a shift in our business model from product-centric to people-centric. You know, this mission really guides us, makes us more inclusive. We explore the concept around growing growth mindset, really challenging internally as employees. And now we're all challenged as employees with diversity and inclusion commitments as part of our, I suppose, measurement or, or um, evaluation framework. And it's really allowed us to be more authentic, moving from a know-it-all culture to a learn-it-all culture and centred and focused really around people. When we think about how do we bring diverse opinions, diverse perspectives, this has really driven that that shift, you know, being more diverse, getting different opinions, thinking about things in different ways than we would have done previously. And a good example of the, the output of that really is one of the products that we created off the back of it. You know, an important line on our mission statement is every person. It challenges us as a company to ask the question, are we truly empowering every person? And it led to that cultural shift being more diverse and inclusive. You know, we focused on one billion people with disabilities and the incredible opportunity to ensure we develop for them as well. We came up with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. It's one of those ideas. It's a design that makes it easy for gamers to use their feet, chin, other parts of their body, and adjust to any other accessible device as well. It's driven a new approach in Microsoft accessibility design, and it's given us incredible opportunity by aligning our values and empowering everybody to achieve more. There is a really good video that goes alongside this um, example, which I wasn't going to share today, um, but I can make that link available for everybody to see, or you can find it um, online as well. But it's really worth looking at the story of how this came together um, and how it brought a group of individuals that may have felt excluded previously really into that um, inclusion conversation. So it's a really good example. So we're trying to, to live this as well. And as I said before, we're always learning and thinking about different ways of, of things we can do, but it's really driven from an internal cultural perspective as well. So I've already talked about importance of responsible business practices um, and creating that shared meaning and understanding people by aligning to their values as well. And I suppose the third and final area that we've, we've put into this framework is the building block around inclusion and how you can drive trust through, through inclusion. How you can use advertising to reach, resonate and increase the chance that customers are looking not only when they see your ads, but they feel really understood, they feel really connected and they feel really that it resonates strongly with them, that they want to take an action when they see ads or communications from your brand. 
you know, people want inclusion, not just to be included. And I think this is worth pausing on because it's a really important element um, because we, I think we see a lot of progression in terms of trying to drive more inclusion. But actually, it's, it's beyond just simple things. It's beyond just the things that perhaps tick boxes. It's not about doing things like multicultural marketing. It goes much deeper than that. You need to think about what you market, who you market to, and how you market with an inclusive lens. So I wanted to pause on that and just think about inclusion in a, in a little bit more detail. And the story of inclusion does evolve for each of us over, over time. At some point, the reality is we have a real sense of inclusion from when we were a lot younger, but there does get to a point where we do feel that sense of exclusion in many different ways or in various different ways. It could be through skin colour, gender, sexual preference, confidence levels, no sense of belonging or something else. And I think what we found and, and heard from some of the work that we've done is to really understand inclusion, you first need to really explore and understand how it feels to be excluded in a meaningful way. I know that really did help drive the um, Xbox Adaptive Controller example I shared previously, but I think it's a concept perhaps that isn't always thought about. You know, we know we want to be more inclusive, but how do you really understand what being inclusive is? Can you understand that concept of exclusion as well? So let me reference back to the study as well. Our research uncovered that brands representing diversity in their ads are more authentic and are more trustworthy. You know, there are supporting stats which, which showcase this and showcase that seeing diversity in ads drives trust in a brand overall. And that's really something that we're trying to all strive for is, you know, how do we increase that trust? How do we be more authentic? But we know it drives a lot of value and I think this proves um, from that concept. We also uncovered that when someone sees an inclusive ad, it also signals that the brand is either a market leader and it really increases their likelihood to, to recommend that brand as well. We talk in that concept around advocacy. Customer adv advocacy is very ROI positive when it comes to marketing, um, but it's hard to achieve in some cases. But in this case, it can have some real positive, uh, positive results as well. And it's definitely worth calling out that authenticity and being genuine is absolutely key to building trust in all of this. Keep this in mind as you're thinking about and creating marketing campaigns, communication campaigns with with potential new customers or current customers. I think brands simply saying we're going to do something without backing it up with action, it's really unlikely to lead to a really positive outcome over a longer period of time, perhaps. You know, people really do see through inauthenticity. I think people are much more prepared to call it out now. Platforms like social media have been great for many things and for other things, they're not very good but they do allow a voice, they do allow people to, to communicate. And I think without really driving and really thinking about that authenticity piece, you can be called out on it. Um, and it is hard and it is difficult. And we'll touch on that in a second. Inclusive marketing can be really daunting for advertisers. You know, advertisers fear taking a stand will potentially alienate some customers. But coming back to the point I made earlier, people believe brands should play a role in solving societal problems. And there are some steps you can take today to create greater inclusion in your advertising. And I think, like as I said, the playbook actually references some some real um, ideas and options and things that you can go into in a bit more detail. But just to summarise, I think what you say and the images you include really matter. It sounds really obvious, but it is actually very true. But there are ways of showcasing perhaps inclusivity and being more authentic than just ticking boxes, for example. So as a recipe to have inclusivity really resonate, we wanted to break this down and think about three things. Depicting connection, that the idea of physical closeness, you know, is really undeniably human and does help create that warm connection. And being realistic is key. Interesting enough, you know, overrepresenting in some ways sometimes can be worse than underrepresenting for authenticity. Demonstrate openness you know, on multiple fronts. People of all abilities, mixed sizes, race, show broad acceptance. And then crucially, I suppose, is balance, equity, create a level playing field. You know, everybody is featured with equal prominence. Multiple dimensions of um, diversity are represented. All this helps create more emotional connection to the image. 
and in actually the study that um, in actually our playbook and, and in the the study as well that I the research study I mentioned as well it showcases how this connection and this connection with images really does drive additional value additional engagement in terms of uplift metrics but also additional value to the business as well so it's really important this is a very simple framework but within this there's there's more depth that can be can be gone into but it does really drive value so I might recap a little bit here and just say you know today we've we've reviewed three important strategies the around respons responsibility values inclusion with trust to the absolute heart of it and throughout the presentation I've kind of touched on five steps that can really help you build trust that drives greater business value and drives greater value for the brand, brand as well so in kind of short summary I'd say start by actively engaging with people around trust privacy and transparency you know ensure that ensure you base all of your actions on responsible business practices I suppose secondly shift your company from being a product centric to people centric we saw this has worked very well for Microsoft and I think it's probably worked well for other brands as well putting people at the center of things ensure you go deep into diversity uncovering what people value and really ask those hard questions around you know are we truly being diverse have we have we asked different opinions if we're putting together a campaign or we're doing a brainstorm do we have diversity internally and are we representing diversity in our in our marketing as well and then lastly you know, really see inclusion as a, as a modern marketing imperative now brands who consider inclusion in advertising really do create authentic connections and this can drive real value I suppose another way to think about it is you know marketing with purpose is the difference between earning a customer for a day and gaining a customer for life if you really get it right and you really lean it lean into those concepts you really can drive that multiplier effect that leads to love and loyalty over a period of time and the more you include people make them be seen and understood the more they invest back in the form of brand love and loyalty as i mentioned and just to recap and, and remind as well like i said I've, I've touched on resources today which are available there's lots more detail in them to help um, help educate. It goes into the concepts I've talked about today in a little bit more detail. The stats and, and information that comes out of the psychology and inclusion is, is really interesting and can really perhaps help drive some new thinking and drive some thought process, uh, thought provoking action for sure. Um, happily, please message me on LinkedIn if you if you um, want to have a look for me with any questions that, that might come up. If you don't get a chance to ask them in the Q&A, if you want a bit more information on on what we've done or um, links to the resources by all means please feel free to, to message out um, and i'll engage with you there i suppose just want to wrap up and say just thank you very much for, for listening and watching um, i hope that really added some value and um, i hope it got you thinking as well and i suppose just a reminder this is a journey um, and it can feel uncomfortable at times and it can feel difficult when you're thinking how do we put this into play or are we doing enough or you know what should we be doing differently um, and all i'd say is be brave you know think about how this starts internally within your own teams within yourselves your purpose what are the purpose of your teams purpose of your brands and how does that come across then to in the marketing and advertising you do but also the products that you design as well they have to be linked there's an opportunity there to to reach new audiences to think about being inclusive and it's a brave journey but it's a journey that that can really lead to some um, some great rewards and some great great connections with with individuals and with people you may not have already had a uh, connection with so thank you again for listening and if, if that's added some value then i'll be really pleased so thank you very much okay great um that's excellent thanks very much uh, ben for a really insightful presentation um so we're now going to have a short q a session um okay so First question, do you think it's easier for smaller or larger brands to take a clear stand on social issues or are there the same challenges for both? Yeah, I think there are probably are similar challenges for both. I think, you know, we tend to perhaps reference you know, bigger brands because maybe they have more influence or they maybe have more um, sway in, in given the size or given the scale or given the, the scope of, of some of the bigger brands. But I think you know every brand is probably going to ask themselves that question of you know what is our purpose what are our values and how do they how do they align to potentially leaning in on some of these um, social issues so i think it's not beyond any brand to ask those questions it's not beyond any any brand big or small to, to think what difference they could make of course there there are you know bigger brands have maybe a bigger platform to 
to market that and to, to PR that maybe, but it doesn't perhaps stop everybody doing their bit. Um, and I think if there there are opportunities to to think about how a brand can lean into those social issues, then big or small, I think it's everyone has that opportunity and, and can take that action really. Okay, great. So there's a question and a supplementary really. So inside an organization, who should really own and drive purpose? And the follow-up is how do you use your purpose to motivate your team and the people within the organization? So who? So this is really interesting, right? Because I think that you might get different perspectives depending on, on who you ask. Um, I think from, from what I've read and what I've listened to, I think purpose, when it's done best and when it's done right, comes from within, from everybody. So it allows everybody that opportunity to engage and, and have their voice heard when they think about purpose and coming up with that statement. I think just having it as a top down perhaps isn't always the best. Now, I know in the reference I use, you know, we, we talked about it came perhaps from Satya, but I think that was with a lot of, you know, input and a lot of um, perspectives heard in that regard. So I think, again, you know, coming from within, allowing, you know, if you're within a small team and you're thinking about, you know, what is our team purpose? What is <clears throat> what is our marketing team purpose, for example? You know, that can come from everybody, can, can come from within, can come from listening to all of those, um, all of those perspectives. And I suppose that, then resonates perhaps into how do you motivate people around that i think if if individuals or team members have a a feeling that their voice has been heard that their input has been <clears throat> taken into account and that they feel part of that purpose themselves because they have created that's that element of perhaps connection within a team or within an organization that can really drive that motivation so you know i'm sure there are examples of, of top-down sort of purpose and, and people perhaps rallying around that but I think maybe the best option is to think more inclusively and think, right, how do we bring diverse opinions from within, build that purpose up from within, and that perhaps helps with that second part of the question, I think, around motivation of, of getting into you know getting a team aligned around a purpose because they've had a had a viewpoint into it and have an opportunity to to feed into it. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Um how do you manage a branding situation where the audience has lost faith in the brand? Wow, good question. <laughs> I think in that regard, yeah, look, it's not easy, right? I think in that regard, there does need to be a, a reset. There needs to be a, a re-evaluation of, of what the brand stands for. Again, going back to that purpose, what we talked about earlier, um, you know, where do things go wrong? Perhaps if things really have, have you know, found some difficult situations or find, find that brand to find themselves in a difficult position, and how can that brand then reset um, and go again and perhaps again listen to, to feedback, take perspectives on board, re-establish the mission or re sorry, re-establish the purpose and then build build some goals and plans around that to, to suppose Phoenix from the flames, I suppose, you know, re come back in into the consciousness and and perhaps win back trust. You know, if trust has been broken, it does take a while to win back. Um, but as I mentioned, right, you know, transparency and, and building that um, framework around around that trust element again it will take time um, but i think the reality is perhaps thinking about um as i said yeah, where are things perhaps not gone well and where can a brand then reevaluate, reset its purpose uh, and come out with more um positivity around that but yeah it's a difficult challenge of course it is but you know probably not impossible okay um there's one or two sort of um questions around authenticity um this one's like sums up really some customers and media can be cynical when it comes to ads showing diversity. It can appear like tokenism. So how does a marketer introduce diversity into ads without it appearing like tokenism? Yeah, absolutely. I think in this regard, and that's the danger, and I think I referenced it as well, is you know, people can see pasts where you know you're just ticking boxes. And I think I would look at it in the sense of where does this start from? Does it start from, does that conversation start from within the team when it comes to um, putting the marketing plan together, the idea, the creative idea, and really creating space to, to challenge how how are we representing diversity in this, in this campaign and how does that connect to our values as a brand? Perhaps where it's, it's seen as inauthentic is where it's just a token gesture, there's no, um, seemingly that isn't part of that brand's culture that isn't part of perhaps what they're talking about or, or how they're acting or behaving whereas when it is linked as i mentioned around to their to their values and to their um, to their purpose it becomes more authentic and that can come through in 
from the internal culture, how are brands putting together these, like I said, these campaigns, how are they really challenging um, inclusivity and the concepts around diversity um, to then put it through then into, into active campaigns and into marketing. The reality is if you can't stand behind it and you can't stand behind what you're preaching or what you're saying or what you're representing in your ads, then it's time to really look back at that and think, actually, we need to start building this again from within so that it can, can shine through. We are being accessible. We are being inclusive. We are listening to different viewpoints, listening to different opinions. We really understand our customers. We understand what their values are, what it means to them, and how we then represent that um, in our ads, rather than, as we said, unfortunately, it sounds horrible, but just showcasing you know, perhaps a tick box exercise in, in some of the creative output. So if it exists within culturally and exists within the thinking of the team and the creativity within the team around thinking of, of different perspectives and gathering information. And I suppose the, the last point I would add to that would be if you are, say you're a marketing team and you're thinking of, right, this is going to be our concept, how can you showcase that to somebody and say, not is this inclusive, but how does it make that person feel from different perspectives, from different backgrounds? Is it resonating? Does it resonate? That could be a, an opportunity to, to checkpoint before anything has gone live. But if it doesn't represent what the brand stands for and the values of that brand, it will start to seem as, as inauthentic. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this next question is a bit of a challenge for you, Ben. Um, hi, I work for Care Home, a charity where our beneficiaries are mainly white affluent people. How can I push the inclusivity message? Yeah, so it, it's a challenge because you obviously what you're representing there is that the you know you know who your customers currently are. I suppose the question would be is you know who could your customers be? Um, and it's a start of a journey of right. This is our, our customer mix now. And there's nothing wrong with that customer mix at all. But how could you start to perhaps think about who we want? You know, who who could our customers of the future be, or who could an alternative viewpoint? And perhaps thinking about again resetting us to okay let's look internally why why is this our current customer base is there a particular reason is that you know linked to location is it linked to historical um customer uh, customers that we've had is it linked to perhaps you know how does how, how does our staff setup look like are we being inclusive in you know, perhaps the people we hire and the back backgrounds that we hire from um, and is that you know causing that thinking so it's, it's a big challenge and i really appreciate the question i'm probably not giving you the exact answer to that challenge but what i would say is perhaps think about how have you got to the stage you are right now how could you be more diverse by thinking of right how do, what are the customers we could be trying to talk to or the, or the sorry customers sorry, what are the, the individuals we could be or families we could be trying to talk to um, and are we representing inclusivity truly in everything that we're doing ourselves to then acquire perhaps new or different um, customers from what you have in the minute so Yes, you have to respect who you currently have and who your base is right now. But I suppose think about maybe looking internally and saying, how did we get to this place, and how could we um, perhaps pivot and change to a, a side, to a additional direction, not a different direction, just an additional direction to perhaps represent more inclusivity in, in the customers you have and, and who perhaps is working there as well. Um, there's a few people asking, does this equally apply to B two B as well as B two C? Yeah, I think if you're talking to <clears throat> you're talking to people, talking to individuals, um, and therefore there is an opportunity for for connection. The product or service in a B two B environment, you know, should also be considered very inclusive. And I think as we're, we're building sort of human connections with individuals, that's in a B two C environment, but also in a, in a B two B environment. <clears throat> but if you know you're building products and services, you know, are they inclusive? Are they really, you know, are they, you know future proofed in that concept and have they been designed with with everybody in mind and not just with some people in mind or if, like I said if you're dealing with a business then you know you're also dealing with people at that business and, and are you able to create that that connection uh, and have brands that, that have equal equal values and equal shared meaning together rather than being a customer brand relationship it's a brand brand or a business business relationship so I think absolutely why why you know they could why couldn't they be really um, we've got so many questions still left to ask, but we are running out of time. So there's there's probably time for a couple more. Um, and this is, I think, this is a theme that's developed with one or two of our viewers today. Um, I understand that consumers feel it is important for brands to play a part in solving 
societal issues, but do you ever think this is beyond what business and brands should be doing and making them lose focus? So, you know, can you actually take it too far, I guess? Um, yeah, speaking honestly, I, I don't know. I think, you know, it's, just, it's a really tricky question in the concept of, you know, how, how far is too far? I think that, you know, establishing, you know, if we listen to, to people, we listen to, to customers, we listen to the generation that, you know, the future generation, they, they want this, they want brands to take a stand, to get involved with. What is too far? I think we're exploring that, aren't we? I, I don't know what that answer is right now in, in this context, but I think doing nothing from what we've heard and, and read in the, the information we've gathered, doing nothing is is riskier than doing something. And it's just a question of thinking of, you know, what, how much can brands do? You know, where can they build a plan or, or a strategy to, to engage from a, a corporate and social responsibility point of view? But what I'd say, rather than saying how much is is too much maybe think about it from a concept of not doing enough is or not doing anything is not doing enough and, and that's the risk that potentially taking is by by perhaps not thinking about that and not leaning in in some way it's riskier than than you know actually doing something and taking an action so it's really hard to quantify exactly what what is too much okay um just one final question then and i guess um there are a number of uh, viewers today who maybe at the start point on this journey. So the question is, how do brands start their journey around purpose and marketing with purpose? I think that first first point around what is our purpose? You know, if, if you're on that journey and, and many brands are, it, that iterates over time, but really establishing what is our purpose? You know, I mentioned at the start that that becomes your North Star. I've heard that mentioned not just in my context, but in other contexts as well. You know, that's your starting point perhaps is is how do we get to that point what is our purpose brands perhaps going back to the question before you know brands have perhaps lost their way you've lost that connection with their purpose they've maybe lost that purpose so to start the journey definitely you know get ideas together bring people in internally from different departments and, and think about building that that purpose out and, and identifying in a simplistic or sim as simply as possible what is our purpose and then start to build everything towards that. I mentioned around you the decisions we make, how does it link back to that purpose? I've heard that used in different contexts from, from business to, to sports or other, other areas as well. But conceptually, it, it makes sense. You know, every decision we're making is linked to that purpose um, and that then will help you know, trigger the, the journey and, and how you build plans off around that. Because if you're able then to, to answer that question, does this align to our purpose? Does it help our decision making? Does it bring us back to what our purpose is? Then, um, then that's going to put you in a much better place than than not having it. How do you start that? It's being brave and saying, you know, challenging the current purpose or the current, I suppose, vision. You know, and being prepared to say, I'm not sure this is working, or I think we could do a better job. I think we do a different job. Let's um, let's sit down and really really brainstorm. But but think about bringing in those diverse opinions and that, those diverse actions. Okay, great. Thanks, Ben. Um, that's really great. So, um, I mean, the number of questions that we've got unanswered that I'm looking at here, we could probably go on for another half an hour to an hour, I suspect, but sadly, that's all the time we have for our webinar today. So, um, I'd like to say thank you again to Ben for today's presentation um, and to CIM Wales for organising the event. We do hope that you have found it interesting and worthwhile. We'll be back with our next webinar, Express the Social Good in Pandora's Box on Thursday, the 17th of February at 1 p.m. You'll find further details listed on the events page on the CIM website, where you'll also be able to register for the session. So on behalf of CIM, thank you once again, Ben, for a really good presentation, and a thank you to you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to welcoming you again to our webinars in the near future. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.